Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. 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 The rumor report. Gossip. gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The, the Breakfast Club. All right. Well, on the real, they were talking about some comments that Joe Button made where he said that he could understand why Kevin Hart cheated on his wife. And Damn. they resp- they responded to that on the real. Here's what Lonnie Love had to say. I don't speak for the black community, but I do think that a lot of black men, they really don't know how to have true, faithful relationships. I disagree. They think because they have money, because they have power, that they can treat women any kind of way. I Lonnie disagree. Love the same and that <laughs> is something we need to work on. We are still dealing with the point of uh, slavery, and we are descendants of slavery. And because our families were broken up, we still do not have an idea of what, how to have together families because our families were broken oh, up. Oh, Lord. I disagree. Mm-hmm. First of all, I disagree with Joe Budden's comments. Doesn't matter if you're broke or rich, successful or unsuccessful. If a man wants to cheat, he's going to cheat. Doesn't matter if his boys are around or not, like Kevin Hart said. Doesn't matter if he works hard, that like Joe said. Men cheat because they want to. Men cheat to feed their egos. We sleep with different women because it makes us feel better about ourselves. You know why I stopped cheating? Because it wasn't making me feel good. You know why it wasn't making me feel good? Because you get tired of lying and hurting the one you love. But you, you know grew how, up. Exactly. But you know how I came to that conclusion? Because I started working on myself in healing my trauma. So when you start doing that, it's not as easy to hurt the ones you love. And being a faithful husband and a great father is not feeding my ego, it's feeding my soul. And that makes me feel better than any ego boost or other piece of poom poom could ever. Okay? Well, all okay. right. Who are you getting mad at? Get I just don't mad. like when people throw those narratives out there about black people. Her. Like, like I salute to Lonnie Love, but damn, Lonnie, like, as, as a black person, how can you just push that kind yes, of narrative? Yes, everybody cheats. It has nothing to do with black, white, Word. Asian, or anything. People cheat, like you said, to feed ego. When they grow That's up it. and they realize that they're hurting the people that they love, <laughs> hopefully they smarten up and they realize it's not worth Joe it. Joe, like, oh, because men work hard. And Kevin's like, oh, because my boys went around. No, nigga, <laughs> you cheated because you wanted to cheat because you was feeding your ego. That's Correct. it. Correct. That's it. Nothing more, nothing you less. You want a hug, bro? You know oh, how I know? God. How you know? Because I was a cheater. Oh, okay. How do you know, Envy? Because I, I cheated That's before, it. man. That's it. Like, y'all ain't no excuses. I'm not proud of it. All, all these excuses And I don't want to talk about it. That was a bad time in my life. I don't life. even know that nigga Well, no you guys are both black men who cheated, so. First of all, <laughs> black men don't cheat. We were black boys, boys. who cheated. That's right. Uh, it was a difference. Boy, boy, boy! That's right. Not a boy anymore, ye. That's right. We're grown, grown ass, ass grown ass man. And I don't feed my ego, I feed my soul. I love my wife. Okay. I love my wife. All Period. right, now Michelle Obama has launched an hey, Instagram video, anyway. video series, right? And uh what she's doing is she's partnering with a ATTN to launch a video series, A Year of First, and that's going to show inspiring stories about students navigating their first year through college. That might be good for you, Envy. Your daughter's going to be in her first year of college. Yeah, right? I'm excited about it. I think I might be even more excited than her. I got, like, tons of NYU sweatshirts. I'm about to get an NYU bumper sticker. I don't know. I'm just excited. Okay. All right. Now, Mike Tyson <laughs> was on T.I.'s podcast, Expeditiously, and he talks about Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was a player, according to Mike Tyson. Here's what he said. He's a n- Rodney Jr. He's showing him a film, uh-huh. and it's a girl. It's something about um, the girl of the video. Something was happening. They were looking at the school. That girl found And then Michael said, yeah, if you had a Rolls Royce, she'd get it with you. Something like that. So I knew Damn. he knew the game, right? I said, Man, Michael, you said that? He knew what time. He wasn't no Stupid little feeble looking little boy like Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite podcasts, by the way. Salute to T.I. and Expeditiously. I can't wait to work out and listen to that one. And uh, Mike Tyson also said when he first met Michael Jackson, he hated him for years. Why? Well, apparently he said that he went to go see him and he had just became the heavyweight champion of the world and Michael Jackson treated him like he was a nobody Michael wasn't impressed. Drop one of the clues for Michael Jackson, goddammit. I, I sold 75 million records with Thriller in a time where people had to walk into the record store and actually buy them. Not impressed by your little knocking people out thing, okay? Please. He said it hurt his Can feelings. You walk, nigga? It broke his ego and it crushed me, he said. But come on, Mike Tyson. It's Michael Jackson. Mike should have snuffed him one now, time. I, I, I want to know who Michael didn't, probably didn't treat like that. Hmm. Who did Michael Jackson feel small standing next to? At that time. Um, it's not many. Nobody. He was yeah. the most famous person in the world. Michael Jackson made the planet stop when he died. Yeah, he was. Come on, man. All right, now, Aretha Franklin's son wants a boycott of the biopic that's going to be starring Jennifer Hudson. Didn't know that they weren't on board. He said, once again, the Franklin family does not support the movie that is in production, nor do we support the book, The Queen Next Door. Neither entity felt the need to contact the core family about anything. 
How can you make a movie about a person and not talk to the person's sons or grandchildren about important information? How can you put a person's family image in a book and not ask permission? If you are a real fan of my mother's, please do not support this. Ask yourself, would you want this done to you? Side note, the only person my mother was in favor of for the movie was Jennifer Hudson, period. Everything else is being done against our wishes. Mm. So that is from her family. That's hard, man. I love Aretha Franklin. I do still kind of want to see it. Mm -hmm. And I do like Jennifer Hudson as an actor, so I feel like I can't see myself not going to see the movie. But you do have to take into consideration how the family feels. What do y'all think about that? Um, I definitely think that you have to take into consideration how the family feels. And I often wonder, like, who has final say and control over what story actually gets told. Because once the movie is shot and in the can, it's not like you can change things, right? I would think that those guys that are, are women would be on set and be directing things as they go, but I I don't know, man. Well, Respect is scheduled to be released in October, and the person who's directing it, Laiso Tommy, has worked on shows like The Walking Dead and on Insecure also, just the FYI. Mm. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Rumor Report. All right, thank you, Miss Yee. Revolt, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody else, the People's Choice Mix is up next. Get your request in now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.